Okay, I think now everybody should be here and I welcome you again to this webinar about organic graph layout with Wi files. Um, my name is Benjamin Niedermann. I'm a software developer at Wireworks and I mainly work at the very cause of the layout algorithm. So in particular, I also work on um, the layout algorithm for the organic layout, um, which I will explain you uh, more in, in the webinar. But first of all, I would like to talk about Wireworks and introduce Wireworks to you, also about um, the main product, Wi Files. And then in the main part of this webinar, I will talk about the organic graph layout with Wi Files. And at the end, um, there will be a round where you can ask questions, and I will try to answer your questions. Um, to that end, I ask you to already um, put your questions in the chat. These questions will be collected, and then um, then you can, um, or then in the question and answer round, I will um, answer these questions. So first about Wireworks. Um, Wireworks is a company that was founded in 2000 and that it's located in Tübingen in the southern part of Germany. We are more than 25 employees working on Wi files and the derived products from Wi files every day, improving it um, every day. So, um, Wi files and all the tools that are derived from became the leading diagramming solutions worldwide, which is uh, also shown by all these corporations that trust our product. And some of them are listed below there, um, only one or some of the popular ones. Um, especially, um, I would also like to emphasize that um, we have customers in more than 60 countries and we have more than 1 million users. Uh, so, for example, using YAD, YAD Live, and Graffiti, these are tools that you can use to draw graphs. And all of them are based on this Y files library, uh, which I will um, also present in a few minutes. Then um, we also have a lot of download several million downloads every year. And um, uh, this is also because Wi files and the products uh, on Wi files are offered in five major platforms like HTML, JavaFX, Swing.net, and WPF, um, and also in other platforms, which I also will introduce shortly in a few seconds. So uh, one of the main products, as I already mentioned, is Wi Files, the SDK, um, which I present or introduce in a few seconds. And it's uh, made for different platforms. And from this library, from this SDK, we also derive products like YAD, YAD Live, and Graffiti, uh, so editors that you can use to draw your um, information. So you have basically two possibilities. Either you use the SDK directly to um, visualize your information, or you can use our tools to visualize your information. In, in the latter case, um, I also would like to emphasize that the tools are good examples what you can do with Wi files because they are uh, basically examples um, on using Wi files as a library. And of course, we also derive other tools like uh, Wireworks Neo4j Explorer uh, and all these tools that are listed below there. Apart from um, uh, offering SDKs and tools, we also offer some services like support and maintenance. And here I would like to emphasize that um, the support team is identical with the developer team, which means that if you contact our support team, you can be sure that you get in touch with someone who is really knows the library because uh, he or she works um, directly on this product. And apart from support and maintenance, uh, we also do consulting, webinars, and workshops, but also software development uh, for customers. Now I would like to talk about the Wi Files library. Um, uh, the Wi Files library is an SDK that you can use to visualize connected data. So, for example, you have some kind of network. A um, simple example would be a social network. 
uh, that shows the relationships between the members and you would like to visualize this and our SDK um, can be used to this as it offers you different kind of algorithms for drawing these networks. In our language we use uh, nodes and edges for these um, terms and graphs instead of network, but uh, basically it's a network visualization tool. And what this tool or this SDK can is that it can do analysis on these graphs. So there are some algorithms that uh, can do some analysis. And then the main part is the automatic layout of these networks. And of course, you should not mix it up with bar charts, pie charts, and function plots. They are also sometimes called graphs, but they are not the graphs that we mean. We mean uh, always networks with graphs. And the SDK has different layout algorithms. And here you can see six of the basic ones. And uh, so the hierarchic one, the organic one, which will be the focus of this webinar, the orthogonal one, the balloon tree and radial one. Um, but there are many different other layouts. And in particular, uh, they can be also combined uh, at certain stages so that um, you can combine features of these uh, layouts. And it is also important to mention that um, these layouts uh, or this SDK is available for different platforms. So for Java, for example, for the .NET platform, but also for the web applications. And one big major task that we always uh, try to solve is to offer you an SDK that has a similar API of, uh, on all these platforms. So for example, today I will show all the example in Wi-Fi is for HTML, uh, but you can basically use this code also in um, in the other platforms as it basically is the same API. If you like to know more about Wi files and Wi work, I, works, I invite you to um, visit our web uh, page uh, where you can find a lot of information about features, but also about licenses and how to uh, obtain uh, these products. And of course, if you don't find the information that you would like to know um, on the homepage, you're invited to just contact us and ask your questions. Now I would like to go to the main part of this webinar, namely the organic graph layout with Wi files. And um, as you can see, in comparison to the other layouts, the organic layout, the main feature is that it seems to naturally crown. So for example, hierarchic layout or the orthogonal layout is uh, very rigid in the structure. So for the hierarchic layout, you have already have some layers, some information about where the nodes should lie on the layers. And uh, this is an uh, layout. For the organic layout, the idea is that we do not know much about the structure of the network and we would like to uh, leave this um, to the layout or to decide how to lay out this and this is done um, iteratively so that it becomes an organic uh, or it looks organic the part of this webinar i will structure as follows at the very beginning i will talk about the pr principles of the organic layout after that, I will talk about the use cases and when to use um, the organic layout. And then in the basic layout, this is um, also a big part of this part of the uh, webinar, I will talk about how to use um, the organic layout using Wi files. And here I actually will show you how to use it in HTML using TypeScript. And then um, in the uh, last part of this webinar, which will be a bit shorter, I will talk about the advanced features of the organic layout and also about the limitations. So now I would like to start with the principles, um, which is important to understand in order to be able to uh, assess which data can be visualized with this layout. And the principle is that 
um, we assume that we are given a physical model in which each node re is represented by a physical object in the plane. And this object can be moved, controlled by forces. So basically the idea is so far here in this example, we have this node and there's a force that pulls the node to the left. And this is uh, a way how we can move the node in the plane. And this is basically what the algorithm does. We, as, um, as developers, we define the forces and the algorithm then applies the forces um, to move these nodes. And of course, we do not define the forces arbitrarily, but there's a system behind this. And this is a very basic model how this is done. Um, the idea is that for non-adjacent nodes, so for nodes that have no edge in common, we introduce repelling forces. This means that if two nodes come close together and they have no edge in common, then they are pushed away from each other. And um, with increasing distance, the forces um, also de decrease. Um, on the other hand, if two nodes are adjacent, so they have an edge between them, then the idea is that we model this edge as a spring. And this spring has a preferred edge length in which it is relaxed. So it's a mechanical spring, actually, that we uh, imagine. And the idea is that if, we, if the nodes are too close together, there are forces that push these uh, nodes um, away from each other um, because the spring is compressed. On the other hand side, uh, if the nodes are too far away from each other, the spring is stretched and the forces um, pull these nodes together again until we uh, reach some, yeah, some balance between, uh, or we reach the preferred edge length of the uh, spring. This is a basic model and um, actually there are many details and uh, variants how to do this and how to model this. Uh, but this was one of the first models um, introducing uh, for such organic layouts. But you don't need to know too many details about this. This is the nice thing. Um, that is part that we do at Yworks. Uh, but it's uh, important to know how this works with the preferred edge length so that you can actually um, control the layout a bit. So what the algorithm then does is that in each, uh, it iteratively changes the layout. So it starts with an initial layout here. This is an example for a graph with four nodes. And we have computed some kind of initial layout. And then what happens is that in each iteration, the nodes are moved as lightly, uh, only for, for some few pixels, for example, um, applying the forces that, um, are defined for these nodes. So for example, these two nodes uh, repel each other because they are too close to, uh, together and they have no um, edge in common. So uh, or for example, these two nodes um, attract each other. And we apply these forces in each iteration at, and at some point here in iteration three, we gain um, a balance between the forces. So uh, all these forces are balanced and no movement is uh, done anymore. And this is uh, basically the ideal uh, state. And um, this is also one of the challenging tasks uh, to achieve when um, working with these organic layouts. But again, you don't need to care about this. This is what um, the organic layout already does uh, inside. And the result of such an organic layout is then, uh, for example, here, this green graph um, uh, or the red graph, uh, which are both the results of the organic layout. And as you can see, uh, these look really organic. So this is also the reason why we call it an organic layout. So now you uh, have learned some important principles about the organic layout. And now I would like to talk about the use cases um, for organic layout. So when to use the organic layout. And typical examples are, for example, uh, social networks where you have some members and there's some relation between the members. So you don't know any real structure on this. There are probably no layers, for example, and you would like to just see uh, whether there are some special structures. Then you can use the organic layout. Or for example, in bioinformatics, um, organic layouts are used to uh, visualize reactions between some 
um, some ingredients. And then there are some other um, examples like computer networks um, here on the right hand side, or you may visualize some kind of clusters and networks or citation networks. So there are many um, examples and the organic layout is especially suitable for large networks. Um, a rule of thumb, um, so it's important that it's um, that there are only few placement constraints that you have. Uh, so, for example, you can um, require that there are no, no over, node overlaps on, you could require some distances between the nodes or the preferred edge lengths um, of the edges. So these are informations that are more low on a local side. Um, but you should leave the um, layout or the layout algorithm freedom uh, to choose actually the position. So that's, uh, that's basically the idea that you don't define too much uh, for the layout. Um, so for example, if you are interested in um, creating a layout where the nodes are assigned to certain layers and these layers are, for example, already known, or there's some kind of directness um, between the nodes, so you know that um, you have some hierarchy, then the organic layout is not suitable um, for this, but you may use other layout algorithms of Wi Fi. So, for example, the hierarchical layout instead. So, um, this already brings me to the basic layout, namely how to use. Um, the organic layout and Wi files. And this is what I would like to do on a practical side. So I would like to show you this at an example um, using Wi files in HTML. Um, here you can see one uh, some of the source code. You don't need to understand it uh, directly, uh, but I first would like to show you some example. Um, so this is will be the, the example we are working on. And I derived this from one of the many demos that you can find on the um, Wi Files homepage. So currently this is a local version, but uh, on the web page you will find the very same page where you can download or uh, where, where can you have a look at the demos. I later on will also give you the link to this. And I just took one of these demos and I adapted this demo for uh, my purposes, namely for the webinar. And this is a typical way how to start with the Wi files to just take one of the demos that could be almost uh, suitable for your use case and then to adapt this. Um, and in this case, um, I have a computer network and this is just the input. So it's very chaotic and you cannot see any structure in this uh, computer network. And the task is now to create a layout with which we can actually see some structure of this network. And this is what I would like to do now. So, and to that end, um, I would like to adapt this uh, method here. Uh, this method is always called um, by by the web page when the layout needs to be updated. So what this method gets is a graph, an I graph, and the method then can assign coordinates to the um, nodes. But of course, we don't want to do this on our own, but we would like to let this do by the um, organic algorithm. So what we do first is um, that I define um, a layout, which is the organic layout. And then I just apply the, um, the layout or the algorithm uh, on, on the graph. Uh, and this is um, already everything that we need to do. And what I now can do is I, uh, one moment, please. Um, I reload this and we already get some structured um, uh, graph layout, um, but of course there are still some problems. So this is the very first attempt to just create the, the graph layout using our um, organic layout. So one of the problems is of course that um, the labels overlap. So this is maybe a thing that we would like to solve first. Um, but maybe first another remark, if I reload this, you will notice that every time um, uh, the, the graph layout changes. And 
to that, uh, that's a um, property of this layout, uh, which is called deterministic, or it's, it's not deterministic at the moment. So it means that every time the layout may give you another output uh, when you rerun this. For this webinar, I would like to have this um, a fixed or deterministic um, behavior. So I set a um, certain property. Um, saying that I would like to get the same result every time I execute it. So when I do this, I can again um, do this. And um, if I do this again, I will get the very same result. So the next thing to do is um, that we would like to resolve the uh, label overlaps. And for that, I just can define another property of the layout, namely consider node labels. And I set this to true. And now what you can see is that uh, no labels overlap anymore. And um, also the layout get a bit more fluffy. Um, but on the other hand, um, maybe it's still too close to the nodes. Uh, so I would like to increase the distance between the nodes. So for example, here, the nodes are like very closely together. And so the next property that I would like to set is the node distances. So I set layout and then um, there's the possibility to define the minimum node distance between um, the nodes and I set it just to 30 pixels, which means that uh, now it is ensured that between two nodes, there's always a distance of 30 pixels. Um, let's have a look at the result. So I update this and now the nodes are spread further apart from each other. The next thing that uh, maybe I again show you um, the, the graph, uh, and the next thing that I would like to do is to increase the edge length. And I, as I already mentioned in the principles uh, part, um, we cannot set the exact edge length um, of the edges, but we can set the preferred edge length. So the preferred length of the spring. So each edge is a spring and now we can uh, tell the layout to use a certain preferred edge length. And for that, there's again a property uh, preferred edge length. And this is what we set to 80 pixels, for example, um, just to increase it a bit, um, the, the edge length um, to spread the um, nodes a bit further away from each other. And already now we can see more structure in this network. So for example, there's some kind of star structure. Here, it seems that there's some kind of core in the network. Uh, and here again, we have some kind of star structures uh, attached to, to some tree. But still, um, it's, it's not perfect yet. So um, we, we need to improve this a bit more. And what I would like to do now is um, I would like to adapt the preferred edge length for all, I call it internal edges. So an internal edge is an edge that um, is not uh, connected to a leaf node. So a leaf node is here a node with degree one. So for example, the personal computers here are leaf nodes. And this is not an internal edge because it's connected to some of these leaf nodes. But I would like to increase the edge length of the internal edges. So for example, of this edge or of this edge, just uh, to further increase the distances. But I don't want to increase the distances um, of these stars here, of these star structures. So I would like to exclude these uh, leaf nodes. And again, um, there's some kind of possible, uh, there is a possibility to do this um, with the organic layout. And to that end, we need to use another concept, namely layout data. And there is the object organic layout data. 
And this gives us again the possibility to define certain properties, but uh, normally it gives us the possibility to define properties on certain uh, edges on certain nodes of the graph. So for example, here I would like to change the preferred edge length of um, the internal edges. And uh, the nice feature here is that there is some delegate property, uh, which is basically a lambda function. And uh, this lambda function um, expect, uh, is called for each edge and the lambda function then should return the preferred edge length. So the lambda function um, gets an edge. Let's call I edge. And now uh, we can return the preferred edge length. And now we need to decide whether an edge is an internal edge or whether it's not an internal edge. And uh, luckily, I've already written some method uh, for this to decide this. So it's called is internal edge. And uh, if this is the case, then I return uh, some preferred edge length for these. I just use 400 pixels, for example. I really want to push the, them out, uh, the nodes out of the core. Um, and in all other cases, I just return null, which means that um, we use the default value here. Uh, of course, in, in TypeScript and in JavaScript, you can write this much shorter here. Um, but uh, maybe if you know Java more, uh, better, then uh, this would be also a typical way to do this. Um, so we have now this layout data and this method internal edge. I would like to show you this very shortly so that you can understand what happen is happening there. Basically, uh, this method gets an edge and it checks whether um, the source node and the target node of the edge is an internal node. If this is the case, uh, then we have an internal edge. And internal node means just that the degree of this node, so the number of edges connected to, the, to this node is one. Uh, and an internal node means that the number of connected edges is not one, but larger that one, than one. So it's not a leaf node. And um, this is basically used by this internal edge, and um, that is what we call here. Um, now we also need to tell the um, uh, graph that it should use the layout data. And we do this by just um, also passing this to the apply layout method. So now um, we use these parameters as the basic setting, and then we um, adapt the preferred edge length um, for, the, uh, for some of the edges. And what we get now is uh, a graph uh, where the stars are still, where the nodes of the stars are still closely lied to their uh, basic node, uh, to, their, to its in the center nodes. Um, and the core is, but is more separated from, from the tree structures. And already now we get some better feeling about um, the network. Uh, in the next step, in order to also show you how to do this with nodes, um, you can also change node distances. I would like to show you uh, a similar example for the case that we say, okay, we would like to increase the distance between this center node of the of these star structures here uh, to these leaf nodes here. And um, so what we do is basically that for internal nodes, we set the minimum node distance um, specifically. And for all other nodes, so for these leaf nodes here, um, we set, uh, we just use the default of 30 pixels. So what I do is I, uh, would like to change the minimum node distances for some of the nodes. Here again, we have this uh, field minimum node distances. And again, uh, it has the possibility to use a delegate um, to change this. So basically, I need to define a lambda function. And this lambda function expects um, a node. And for this node, I should return uh, the, uh, the minimum node distance. 
Um, again, I use the predefined functions um, that I've written before. In this case, it's an internal node. And if it's an internal node, I would like to return, um, let's say, 200 pixels. And in all other cases, an null. Uh, and of course, this uh, expects some node. Um, so let's have a look at the result. And indeed, uh, if you look at these uh, small star structures here, uh, the center node um, is, in the, is still, of course, in the center, but the leaf nodes are far away from these uh, from the center nodes. Um, I've defined um, the minimum node distance no also for these core nodes. Maybe you have recognized this, but they are already far away from each other, so there will be no impact on this. So basically, you can see the impact now on, on these star structures here. So this gives already a possibility to, to structure this um, graph, but I would like to show you a bit more advanced techniques, how you can further work on this uh, graph layout. Um, so um, in this case, or in this example, I would like to uh, show you how to, for example, only change the layout of the core of this graph. The core of this graph is here, for example, is here this component that I um, encircle with my mouse pointer. Um, and basically, if you know a bit of the graph theory, uh, this is a biconnected component. And I would like to change the largest biconnected component, the layout, while fixing the layout of all other parts. So this is sometimes useful. Uh, so if you would like to change your layout incrementally. So you have created some layout and now you would like to change small parts of the layouts using some other techniques, maybe in other layout or in this case, the same layout, but with the different parameters. So the first task will be to identify this uh, core structure here. Um, to that end, I already have written some uh, function and it's called identify core of network and it just expects the graph. And for those of you who would like to know how this actually works, it just applies an algorithm um, that you can find in the Y files at um, SDK. And this is just an algorithm that computes the wire connected components. And what it does then is that it goes to all components and it selects the components with the uh, largest number of nodes. And in this case, this is the, the um, uh, core component that I've shown you before in, in, in the web interface. So now I have this um, core component, which is a set of nodes or list of nodes. And now I would like to change the layout of this. And I would like to do this after um, I have layouted the entire graph, but now I would like to work only on the core nodes. And to that end, I tell this um, the layout data that I would like to um, work only on, on a certain part of nodes. And this is called affected nodes. And this has a field items and I can assign core to items, which basically means that um, uh, now the algorithm will work only on these nodes, but still considering all other nodes um, in the layout process. So for, um, basically what it does, it, it fixes the other nodes, but changes the coordinates of the core nodes. And um, what I also need to do is I need to activate the, uh, this mechanism. Uh, and to that end, I need to say uh, that the scope of this layout uh, is now the subset um, uh, or is a subset uh, of the nodes. Here for this, there's this organic layout, uh, organic layout scope subset property, but there are also other properties that you can say uh, set, but subset is the uh, simplest one that you can set in this case. Um, the others uh, will also include neighbor nodes that are fixed, but then they can change the, uh, slightly. But in this case, I only want to change the subset nodes. 
Um, okay, now we have done this and um, now we can, or what I could show you again is um, I apply the layout and the layout data a second time um, using these new properties. And what you will notice is um, that nothing has changed. So if you compare this to the previous result, um, so of course there's some jump uh, because I've scrolled a bit, but basically there's no, no change in the layout. And this is because I haven't told the layout uh, what it should do um, in, in another or in a different way. And this is what I would like to do now. And um, the idea is, uh, maybe I first show you this in the web interface. The idea is that we lay out this core um, component here in a much smaller area so that we restrict the area of this core. And for that, we can set the uh, output restriction of this layout um, to, for example, a circle. And I set the circle to the center of zero, 0 and to a radius of, let's say, 500 pixels. And I still need to import this. And if I started this again, uh, don't be surprised. It won't look very nicely. It's um, but because what now happens is that all the core nodes will be placed in the left, upper left corner because the origin of the layout is uh, somewhere here. So somewhere here is the uh, origin, so the uh, center of the circle that I've just defined. So somehow I need to find out the center of the core um, to further define uh, then the, the circle or the output, uh, the, the center of the output restriction. Um, for that, I um, would like to use the um, geometric center of this core. So what I do is I um, compute the geometric center of the core. And um, here for that end, I have this uh, center of nodes. Um, it expects a list of nodes and it computes the geometric center of the nodes. So if we go to this uh, method I've written before, it just goes through all nodes. It takes the coordinates um, of the nodes. Um, here, it, it, here it goes through all nodes, takes for each node the coordinates and adds this to, to the uh, to, to one point and then at the end it computes the mean of these coordinates and then we get the geometric center of this core. Um, nope. And we need to tell um, the algorithm to set the center um, of the circle to this center. And nope. I rerun this. And what we get now is um, that the this uh, core becomes much smaller. So this is the previous result uh, with, with, with a large core. And here we have encircled it uh, in a, or enclosed it in a smaller circle. Um, and maybe you would like to have this. So this was just to show you how to incrementally improve um, the layout that you've created, applying the organic layout several times, uh, applying it only to a subset of nodes. And this is a very nice property of the organic layout that you can uh, um, restrict the scope of um, of the nodes that are considered in the layout. So this is uh, already what was already the part um, which was about the basic layout. So I hope that you've learned a bit uh, about how to uh, use the organic layout uh, in its basic. It should give you a starting point uh, from which you can try on your own uh, how to use it and to you can start with playing around with it a bit uh, and to find out more about this. Um, 
So in this part, the idea was to teach you a bit about the preferred edge length, about the minimum node distances, but also about restricted drawing areas, and also about how to do this incrementally, so by applying the solver several times. Finally, I would like to talk about the advanced features of this uh, organic layout and the limitations. Um, one important feature are the substructures. Uh, so you've already seen some substructures in the layout. There was this star substructure. And if you have a, a having a look at these, uh, what you will notice here, for example, you can see one of these star structures. They are not regular, regularly um, placed around the center node. And this is sometimes a thing that you would like to do. So if you have few nodes, this is still done by the forces very well. But for many nodes, um, you would like to improve this. And this is a simple structure that you can actually recognize. And uh, the organic layout, for example, now can recognize this structure and can apply a sub algorithm on this placing the nodes around the center in a regular style. I would like to show you this um, very shortly. Um, and for this case, because it's very simple to do, um, namely, we set the star substructure style to um, star substructure style radial, uh, which means that we place the nodes around the center node of such a star in a regular way on circles. Uh, this is now seen here. If you have a, if you compare this to the previous version, which I show you now, here it's, uh, the nodes are irregularly placed and now uh, they are really regularly placed because now we handle these substructures um, in a specific way. And this is what you can do also with other substructures like parallel substructures or with chains. So for chains, we have different kind of uh, ways to handle them or also with the cycles so that you place the nodes on, on a real circle. Um, so the nodes of the cycle. And um, if you are interested in this, um, there are many more um, ways to adapt this and uh, to yeah, to set your layout up, but it's more an advanced way to have a look at the organic layout. And if you're interested then in, in such things, then let us know and we may uh, set up a further webinar on the organic layout showing you more details, more advanced techniques about uh, this layout style. So apart from the substructures, um, the organic layout also uh, offers you the possibility to identify clusters. So for example, clusters um, are defined by, by nodes that um, have many edges in common. So, and the organic layout algorithm then can place these uh, clusters of nodes close or each cluster or the nodes of each cluster closely together while the clusters are placed far apart from each other so that you can easily recognize them. Another technique that you can use is um, group nodes or what you can or is taken into account as um, are group nodes. So the idea is that um, you have some nodes which are grouped by a larger node and the organic layout can take this group node into account. And there are also different possibilities to set this layout uh, up to um, consider the group nodes differently. And um, again, if you're interested in this, let us know. Um, and we are happy to, uh, to, to um, give you more information on this. And finally, I would also like to mention at least two limitations of the organic layout. I already said in the use cases that there are some limitations, of course, uh, with respect to the structures of uh, or what you can express. But for the particular implementation, you need to also take care about um, the labels of the node. So there is no integrated node labeling for the organic layout. For other layouts, there is such um, techniques, or there are such techniques. Um, and this means that the organic layout typically considers a node and its label as one large node, which basically means that we, we restrict our node uh, or this, this area in this dashed circle is not 
uh, available for other nodes. This is sometimes important to to remind if if you use um, or to, to recall if you use uh, nodes with large labels so that you're not surprised what happen is happening there. Uh, further thing which is not a really disadvantage but it's it's a thing of the these force based methods is that there's typically no edge routing but uh, the edges are only expressed by straight lines this can be sometimes an advantage but sometimes you may also use or want to use um, uh, edges with bands and then you need to use a different layout yeah that's basically already all i wanted to say about the um, organic layout um, I hope that you've learned a bit about uh, the principles, about when to use it and about how to use it. And maybe I could also give you already a bit uh, of an overview of what everything else there is uh, that you can explore for the organic layout. And um, if you are interested, for example, in, in the demos, um, you can find them uh, on the web page. Um, using these links here, especially if you are interested in the organic, you can um, find all related organically related demos using the hashtag organic. Uh, further, if you're interested in the Y files and you would like to first evaluate it, there are versions or there are full versions that you can use uh, for 60 days and you will have the complete um, uh, strengths of the library to evaluate whether this is a library that you would like to use. Uh, and with this, I would like to finish the, the main part of this webinar, and now um, I would be happy to um, answer your questions. And um, the idea is that I will now get these um, questions via the in chat, and I then will answer these um, step by step. So one question is, um, so what kind of algorithms are we using in Y files? And um, what I can say to this is um, that um, we use custom implementations of well-known algorithms. Um, so for example, in uh, this case, uh, maybe you know this, um, uh, these force-directed algorithms already we use a variation of the Fruchtermann and Reingold um, uh, algorithm with the Kamada Kawai forces, um, or we, we combine the forces of both systems. Um, and this is one typical way how we do this, but we also um, come up with own ideas and implement our own ideas um, for, for the algorithms and um, try to uh, create variations um, and then so that it's really specialized for, for our needs. Um, that's that's the one main part also of um, of the developers working on, on the layout algorithm. Um, and it's always important that we try to uh, get um, yeah that we try to balance the quality and then the performance. But quality is typically more important than the performance. So which means that um, that for us, it's it's important that um, we invest a lot of time in the quality of the layout, uh, and the balance is typically done automatically, so that you as a user don't need to care about this. A further question is: uh, Are there restrictions for the graph sizes? Um, and uh, the answer is um, yes, of course. So as, as for every algorithm, there, there are some kind of restrictions because um, we have only limited uh, computation uh, power. But um, it depends very much on how your graphs are structured. So whether they have many nodes, whether um, or how many nodes they have, how many edges, how the structure is. Um, but as a user, you normally don't need to care about this. So this uh, balance between quality and performance is done automatically. So for example, for the organic layout, our experience is that with a thousand nodes, you, you normally don't have any problems. And maybe with uh, 10,000 nodes, our algorithm starts also to lower the quality. But um, uh, it, it's, it's not what you typically need to um, adapt, but you can, uh, but if you would like, to you have some kind of parameters on a very high level. Um, and then um, maybe also further important um, 
comment on this. It turned out that, for example, using substructures, the performance of the organic layout became uh, much faster because we can summarize uh, some, some of the structures and um, can uh, compute this more and more or can compute this faster. Uh, and then there's a question, uh, can you enforce no uh, node edge overlaps? Um, so that there are no overlaps between nodes and the edges. Um, and here we um, can um, set, or you can set a setting that um, avoids these overlaps, but uh, it, it's not guaranteed. So this is a very typical property for the organic layout for some of these things like preferred edge length. It's always um, that with these four systems, you can try to achieve this, but you cannot directly guarantee it. But uh, typically, um, it, it works um, out that, that you can do this mostly. And in some cases, it doesn't work. Um, so for some few nodes, for example. And yeah, basically how it is done is uh, that we introduce some yeah, further or additional forces that push the nodes away from, uh, from the edges. So there's again the, the, uh, a similar question about the maximum number of nodes and edges. Um, and um, on, on the organic layout, what can be handled? And um, the answer is there is no real hard limitation. It it's really depends on, on, on the structure. And typically, we can create results for 10 of 1,000 nodes um, or even more nodes. Uh, but um, uh, it just depends on, on how the structure of the graph is. So uh, basically, you sometimes also need just to need to try this. Um, uh, if you have a look from a more theoretical com um, point of view, um, then uh, you can say that it uh, has quadratic running time this algorithm, and which basically means that uh, for very large instances, you may wait uh, a bit or uh, may wait a long time with the course of this um, quadratic property. But still, of course, we do some uh, things to increase the important uh, performance. So for example, um, on the not JavaScript side, so for example, for Java, we can actually do uh, multi-threading or for other platforms like .NET, uh, but for JavaScript, for example, um, we cannot use multi-threading. But this is, would be one of the possibilities to increase the performance. Um, and of course, we always work on uh, improving the performance for these algorithms because um, you know that this is one of the parts where we really can um, yeah, can improve uh, or make an improvement uh, that that has an effect uh, on, on on the layouts. Yeah, it seems that there are no further questions. Um, I would like to um, finish this uh, webinar. I hope that you've learned some news uh, new information uh, about organic layouts and that um, you've learned how to use it and when to use it i would like to thank you for your attention um, goodbye <laughs>